Yo. Everyone, and welcome to an I'm fanfic for you back with another part of, what if Issei, was betrayed by everybody, and was the son of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Now, let's start the part 2. Mission 2 Labyrinths and Vampire Princess. We currently see our protagonist Nero sitting on the deck of Ryudamaru checking the files about the labyrinth different monsters from that darkness. Reading it carefully as Nero took a drink of water as he saw the supposed dangerous monster they think Kors saw in there. Nero. Damn it the faction are useless like come on they only went to the supposed 65 floor right. How can they guess that strongest monster are there he let out a loud sigh and lay on the floor as he stared at the night sky be from close them. Nero remembered the time they called him useless, worthless, powerless, and finally deadweight those words haunt him more than Raynor could ever be his biggest fear was those words that hit his inferiority, he beat himself harshly for feeling powerless to prevent the event that have unfolded around him. Such as the death of Asia, the game against Riser, and more with the Gremory group, and felt useless on not doing things better. And when they took everything from him. Nero wanted to get revenge for taking away his supposed sacred gear, but the moment he lost it was also a moment of helplessness. Greg revealed that he was a she named Delia and punch him like a doll, and said that he is worthless, and from that point on Nero had a permanent reminder that is is powerless. And now he'll take any opportunity to prove to himself that he isn't deadweight, and now is motivated to prove them wrong. Nero. Had his eyes open as he felt that Ryudamaru stop all of a sudden before getting up and stretching his body, as he take a look to see that they arrived and see a patrol of vampires guarding the labyrinth, finally am here thanks a lot Ryudamaru, and go back to the dimensional gap, and keep yourself away for Scarlet and Office you got it. He then heard a boat sound as Nero smiled and got near the deck's edge and jumped style Dante. Hi do mansion. The ex-harem girl we're currently satisfying their future husband Ash with their body, and trying to get full with him as Ash was given a face like he was filled in luxury before they took a short break. Ash. Is a young man with black hair and blue eyes with an average body weight, and now he was smirking as he saw his women being marked by him, as he pets his partner Delia to think I get to have fun with the women I love is amazing. I wonder why couldn't the banish do anything with such a lovely ladies, such as yourselves. Delia. Let's not talk about that worthless ex-partner of mine has nothing compared to you she said enjoying the pets. Diamat. Yeah, he's not true dragon he was a wimp who couldn't even take us, but you and the other hand it's amazing our dear ass she says, trying to push her breasts on his back. Office. I regret him ever being my first friend with no change in her expression only the blush in her cheeks. Asia. Me too it would have been better if you came earlier, she said with a blush on her face, thinking what if she made friends with Ash early than with Issei. Rias. Yeah if you are brown, you could have done everything better than he can ever do. Yumi. That's right maybe if you are around I would have revealed my gender earlier, then hide it from the dead weight she thinks, since Ash is better with a sword, than Issei. As they spoke, they continue to trash about Issei Nero without knowing that he's getting powerful by the passing days, and they're doing nothing but enjoying last, and haven't started training against then you chaos brigade named Outriders group and organization that is causing damage against the factions, and the one that will stop them is the one they've been trashing about. Ash. That's right he's nothing compared to me. I have everything he has and I can do everything better. Let's do it again soon our marriage will come right girls he said, turning to every single girl who gave him flushed cheeks. All the girl. Yes we'll be together forever, Ash. Ash mind. Yeah, we'll be together forever thank you Ash-chan I couldn't have everything without you. And with that and I could be heard in the door, one of the girls decided to open it, and it revealed Venelana, Graphia, Misha Beale, Lady Phoenix, Lady Citri, along with Goddess and Young Valkyries, with eyes filled with desires. And Ash near it too well, he's also been having relationships with them as well, and couldn't help but just grin happily. Grand Meeting Hall. The leaders have been discussing about the recent attacks of the Outriders how they striking important bases, and are able to move without getting captured and they're one step further against the faction's plans. Azazel. Damn it, even if we achieve peace there's always problems to deal with. Honestly, they haven't started getting this bad when we had that dead weight around. Michael. You're right I wonder if this is a punishment, but it doesn't matter we got rid of someone that is useless Ash is the better pick for being the Red Dragon Emperor. Serzichas. You're right we have to deal with these problems ourselves, and we better do it fast. My little sister's wedding is coming soon and I want to be there. Auden. You're right, but these people are just very troublesome, but I have a question Hades why do you look like that? But that said, everyone turned to look at Hades and his new appearance. Everyone had to nod and say that that appearance looks great on him. Hades. I don't have to explain it to someone like you are my own business. 
And they weren't the only ones there was two representatives of the Yakai and the vampires, since their respective leaders are busy from part of the Yakai is Sun Wukong, and the vampires is named Gustavo. They were having a conversation about the banished and disgrace they threw away before long a magic circle. And they're Gustavo's ear so he had to respond. Gustavo? Hello, who is this? Communication. Lord Gustavo, please call reinforcements call anyone we are being annihilated here by this monster. Gustavo? What are you talking about Eric? Is that you what is going on? Is something happening in the labyrinth gate? The RIC communication. Please, we need reinforcements all my 30 soldiers are dead oh no, he's coming, please save me no wait, please don't kill me. I'll do anything. His voice got louder to the point where everyone in the hall could hear him. Communication. Bang 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 what are the sounds that could be heard, causing everyone to freeze hearing those gunshots until hearing your voice, and hearing that person, Eric's scream of terror before going silent and breaking the, the connection, the only word they heard, was jackpot. Labyrinth gate. We see Nero Sky driving down towards the vampires until taking a position with Rebellion, and using a sword technique he calls Helmbreaker, that is a down slash towards a near vampire. A huge impact was heard for everyone to hear and check what happened before seeing a crater with a still vampire, and a young man with white holding a strange looking sword. Everyone was watching the scene with confusion as they the vampire who is still standing like a stone before one call him out. The AMPIRE8. Hey Jack are you okay? That guy behind you so kill he could continue until seeing something horrifying. What he say impact everyone they all had a face of horror on what they saw. What they saw was that the name Jack was moving in half yes he was cut in half from the bones and flesh, as blood slipped out like a fontina, until the young white hair boy was checking his sword, as he wiped the blood away with a slash as it spilled down on the floor. An ERO mind. Hum a normal person wouldn't be alright killing peoples like this, I don't feel anything no sympathy, shame, guilt, I got cold huh, he was so concentrated on his thoughts that one vampire start walking towards him with no fear, except if you count his legs trembling. The AMPIRE 23. Hey asshole the hell did you do to Jack? Seeing that he was being ignored he let the angry rush in and start get ready to swing his sword at Nero, but I'll make you tremble in Apo. Honor. Bang. The sound of a gunshot was heard, and the bloodbath began where Nero shot his bullet at the six vampires in the Chester head with a hard struggle of missing shot that weren't hit their mark perfectly and missed, but still killed them, because the bullets were sliver bullets. Nero was fully concentrations on killing his enemy with Donner and Schlag, after being nearly hit with a magic attack Nero slipped onto the ground, seeing a group of ten coming after him, he decided to make a magic circle and use transmute at the ground, catching the group's feet, and getting them stuck. As Nero inhaled some air as fire gathering in his mouth. Nero. Fire dragon roar, a large stream of fire was released towards the direction of their stuck vampires before the fire, enlarging it itself further, and strike the vampires with such high power fire, that incinerated the up body of the them into charcoal. Nero turned towards the 18 vampires that are left before getting ready to fight he let out a cough, and the reason was because he's not used to using fire dragon. Roar mainly being that is not a dragon anymore, and has no dragon aura just using a magic base attack that hurts when released the attack. In order to get the aura of a dragon would be doing the same thing as Siegfried has done. Kill the dragon. As the vampires saw how Nero was coughing they immediately forecharged towards him, but immediately were sliced from the head, while turned his head to the side to notice a couple three vampires planning to teleport away, either to get reinforcements or spread the word about him without any hesitation, Nero immediately gunned them down before they can escape. And then started to blocking attacks with rebellion from another group of nine, seeming to take a formation with three mages on the rear, and three tanks in the front, with a strike force comprised of three who seemed to be better in combat. Nero always getting a rough time with the three strikers, and the mages who started by attacking him from the rear putting him to the defensive immediately getting pissed off. Nero stabbed rebellion onto the ground and cleanse his hands together together, as a bright light emerged from his hands. He was using another dragon slayer magic attack. Nero. White Dragon. Holy Ray when releasing the light it released multiple holy projectiles at the vampires hitting different parts of their bodies. But the tanks were the lucky ones to take those hits and block them as for the mage group they were all sadly injured, while the strike force were completely hit with a direct hit, as for the two who seemed to be leaders were also hit and completely caught off guard, but feeling the sting of the holy attack that they never believed someone could use. Reason was all thanks to Ascalon still having holy attribute help them gain it, but the consequences of using it, leaves him out of dragon slayer magic attacks for the next day. Not letting this chance go Nero picked up rebellion and quickly dashes forward and killed the strike in force, before taking out honor and shooting the tankers, and using his demonic energy from his right arm to power his bullets and break their shields, hitting their shoulders before getting butchered and cut in half before noticing the mage group and just shooting them off. 
leaving one alive and grabbing him by the neck. And starts doing a movie reference. Nero. I know what it's like to lose to feel so desperately that you're right yet to fail nonetheless he said, approaching the two remaining vampires, and the one he's holding from the neck with his right hand being his devil bringer, desperately trying to make Nero to let him go, while rebellion was hold from his left hand. It's frightening turns the legs to jelly. But I ask you, to what ends? Dread it, run from it, destiny arrives all the same, and now it's here. He said before snapping the vampire mage neck and dropping him before getting closer to the second command as the commander seems to have a magic circle, and contacted someone but let him so he can play, and finally arriving to the vice commander vampire and said, or should I say I am. B-A-M-P-I-R-E-2. Please don't do this I'll be useful to you. I will tell you everything I he couldn't continue as a rebellion jammed itself at the vampire's chest, as Nero started to pierce hard with his two hands, before pulling it out and walking to the last remaining vampire being the commander. The AMPIRE one Oh no, he's coming please save me, Nero steps get even closer as he places Rebellion behind his back and starts picking up four swords from the dead guards. No way please don't kill me. I'll do anything. But was too late. In a desperate struggle, the commander started to get up and run away, turning his head back to see Nero, but was his biggest mistake a shot was heard, as Nero shot the bottom hilt of the sword, as it starts flying and jam, in itself on the vampire shoulder piercing the wall, desperately trying to pull it out by moved his other hand, but that was also quickly pierced to the wall. Similar to his legs as a Nero seemed to get closer, seeming to want to end this by getting closer to him. Nero. With Donner up and pointed towards the vampire's heart, said one single word jackpot, a loud bang was heard, and before long everything was silent. As a Nero started walking further away from his bloodbath, and started heading to the labyrinth gate and entered the darkness while more gunshots were heard, and screams of monsters were heard before going silent yet again. Labyrinth gate hours later. It been an hour and then reason was because of preparation and soldiers as everyone arrived, they all had expressions of horror and amazement, as they all saw the dead bodies of the vampire, who were victims of the monster who caused this tragedy. The Stava was run around with vampire guards as they saw how each of them died. Their head were gone some were cut in half the worst one was Jack he was literally cut in half down from the skull to the legs, and the crater was like someone landed on the ground, which means the monster who done this came from the sky. Serzichas was checking out the ten vampire that seemed to be trapped in the ground, while being impacted by a powerful fire that incinerated the up body of them, leaving the legs intact. Serzichas was frightened by the fire powers that done this, then he noticed a fallen angel checking the damage with artifact. Michael was doing the same check on the damage, but was left surprised after feeling the aura of holy magic that made him immediately made him feel surprised and fearful of the person who cast such powerful holy power, and same like Serzich as a fallen angel with a artifact was checking damage and detaching anything. Azazel was watching as his subordinates examined the battle of any trace of power and checked his tablet plate showing him serving information causing him to be lost of words. Zeus was amazing by the destruction whoever did this cause he to wonder if this was the outrider doing, and the question is why. Odin had a face like he wishes that this never occurs towards Asgard, thinking of his citizens being butchered like this is a bad taste in his mouth. So he watched Thor on his opinion, but he probably thinks he could take this monster down. Sun Wukong was read the Kai, and what he sensed was a terrifying it was like seeing a demon that screams power, and it's growing fast. Or was surprised by Nero's strength, but just examining the destruction he could tell Nero need more training, and if he desired, then he'll try Nero to be more strong. Hades was smiling has been collecting the souls of these poor souls that come across the demon path. Inside the labyrinth. We currently see Nero smashing, slicing, shooting his way past every single monster in this labyrinth, he did, however, stop to face one to get experience on how they move and what their weaknesses are to get stronger by, letting his body move on its own by its instincts and now he has currently. Around the 65th floor of the labyrinth where right in front of him is a monster named Behemoth and behind him blocking his exit were a group of skeletons named Trom soldiers that he had seen around the 38th floor. And now he was getting ready to fight with rebellion on his right arm and Donner in his left, he began to start taking care of the skeletons, completely ignoring the Behemoth in which made it angry and started getting ready to charge while he say completely massacred the skeleton army to the point where he accidentally stepped on some bones and breaking them. Then all of a sudden the behemoth finished its charge and started trying to ram him down, but then it stopped reason why is because it was being held by the horn by Nero Devilbringer, as Nero jumped in the air while holding the behemoth and smashing it down to the ground, leaving a huge impact on the ground and having half of its face in it. Then Nero threw it up in the air until then it came close to the ground and gave it multiple punches around its body. But one final move would end this all, and it was none other than a jam from his fist towards its head, basically snapping its neck and being launched off the bridge. Nero. Bye-bye.
he said, while pulling out Donner in the direction of where he tossed the behemoth, then bringing Donner close to his face to the point where he imaginate, bowing off smoke from the barrel. He, scum. Brand meeting hall. We're currently with the factions all surrounding a table, each of them having great expressions, but they weren't all alone. They included some of the heirs of Devil Family, who are part of DXD, and now each of them didn't know what to say, or how to start this conversation about the massacre that happened near the labyrinth, but one person stood up, and it was none other than Azazel. Azazel. All right listen up everyone a massacre, or should I say a bloodbath happened at the location of the labyrinth, we do not know who was the suspect, but this person carries a lot of power, or maybe they were just an organization, but even so their strengths could be seen by these images he said, showing off all the images of all the damage that Nero has done. All the younger Aaron members of DXD were completely shaken, and completely left a shock on what this organization or person has done to a group of vampires, some of them even passed out some of them were disgusted to the point where they could almost throw up. Ash. Wow why would they start attacking that place? From what I know there's nothing special about that labyrinth than just monsters. Ask the new Red Dragon Emperor, fair curiously. Michael. From what we know that labyrinth has been there longer than we have seen, although we're pretty much glad that those monsters never get out of the labyrinth, but their numbers are so many there. Office. I've been there once, because I sent strong people in there, but I couldn't teleport inside it seemed to have an anti-magic field inside, preventing anyone to easily pass through, so you must go down and face the monsters. Scarlet. I don't remember what down there, because my dreams have never reached there that place is filled with mysteries. Sun Wukong. He let out a sigh and began to tell everyone what he sensed when they arrived in the feeling a nerve him everyone this may be off topic, but I recommend us not to fight that thing you do not know what I felt. It's Kai what is demonic it screams of power. It's Desire's power and if I'm right, that thing is down there getting stronger. Serzich's. Then we'll have to do the obvious well wait until that thing comes out and kill it. I can't be one person it's impossible. How can someone have draconic power? Holy power. And the strength to kill a person with a sword. Azazel. I think we should start preparing countermeasures against that thing, and whatever that thing is, it uses a gun as well we found silver bullets in the bodies of the vampires, so this person knows their weaknesses. Valerie. It doesn't matter. All we have to do is just crush him, it's probably just a small fry that just knows how to fight and knows their weaknesses. There he is. Valerie is right and let's not forget we have Ash with us he can easily take down this person. Elmenald. Yes Ash he will kill this person right he will avenge my people, right. Ash. Yeah, that person has nothing against me. Besides, I'm the strongest and I'm here to protect you all. Everyone had a smile from that this was the hero the leader of DXD, and the fiancé of many women that used to be with Nero, but now his name was forgotten, and it's just known as Banished being his new nickname, but what they don't know, is that a Banished is the person that killed the vampires, and in the future, will kill many other people who dare try to face him. While everyone was praising him people who were allied to Nero, began to look at each other, and slowly showed a grin. These fools will know who did this, and how strong he'll become, and maybe he will become a legend. Inside the labyrinth. We currently see a white rabbit jumping up in the air to avoid something before a loud bang was heard that hit the rabbit on the head. As the one who killed, it was none other than Nero, but something was different about him his eyes that used to be amber were no longer there. They were nothing but red eyes, and his hair seemed to be even whiter than before. Nero. Damn it those leaders are nothing but liars. He technically yelling in this abyss of darkness and his reason was normal he made it to the 100th floor, and it turned out that they're a lower level in this labyrinth, I should have never trusted their information like seriously this place might have 200 or more. He said, as you continue to move forward. Well you'll probably be asking what happened to him. Well, let us go back a few days later. Before Nero arrived to this floor. Week before. We currently see Nero sitting on the ground while checking on his supplies as he's been collecting several minerals and material from this floor. Everything was great, but something was missing something very important, and it was none other than food. Nero. Damn it I'm gonna starve to death down here there's nothing to eat and if I go back, there'll probably be guards waiting for me. What should I do? Talking to himself he didn't notice a monster coming right behind him, letting out a roar. As a Nero turned around, he immediately began to transmute and start transmuting himself down, as he gave the monster the middle finger. Nero went down enough the point where the monsters can never reach him. The further down he went he felt something and felt the room suddenly got brighter. He quickly decided to transmute the ground big enough to see what's going on, and what he saw left him speechless. What he found was a rock the size of a basketball that radiated a beautiful light. This mineral was buried and fused with the surrounding rocks, and released the liquid. A beautiful and mysterious stone. The mineral emitted a darker blue light than aquamarine. This stone was actually known as a divine stone. 
the divine stones were rare crystals and considered one of the greatest historical treasures in the world. The angels considered them a lost legend. The divine stones were created when a large group of magic came together and crystallized over a thousand years. They were between 30 and 40 centimeters in diameter, and then, over a few hundred years, their saturated magic was liquefied and poured back into the earth. The liquid they secreted was known as ambrosia, and it healed all wounds. It could not regenerate missing limbs, but it supposedly extended one's life, as long as it continued to drink it, and it was also known as the elixir of life. The legend said that God healed the masses with the same ambrosia. Nero. He was laughing and national treasure in his hands, ha 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 I think something like this would fall into my hands right now. Honestly, Michael would want this, but too bad it's mine. We currently see Nero laughing in joy if the faction didn't betray him, he would have maybe given it to the angels. But you know fuck them. But slowly that happiness disappeared, as a grumble was heard from the stomach. Nero. Damn it I haven't eaten yet he began to take out his backpack to rechecking if he still has some food, but no, and his stomach wasn't helping. I should have packed more food. But I didn't expect. There was more floors below. Nero, who is currently thinking on how to get more food as options were limited, either he returns back and restart going down, or he has to find food here, but there is no food in this place wait a minute their monster couldn't eat them. But he remembers something very important when a human eat the meat of the monster, but his stomach growls again, so he ignored the memory, and so he began to transmute the area big enough to be a cave, until finally reaching the top, and was greeted by two monsters, fighting each other that being a rabbit and a bear. When those turned to look at a Nero they gave him a growl, but that didn't work against Nero who took out rebellion and threw it jam in itself into the skull of the rabbit. Seeing how his lunch was brutally killed the bear started acting with it instincts and was going to run away, but sadly, you can never run away from a hungry beast. Nero. You ain't go anywhere you'll be my food. He began to run wild dragging the bear's face hard on the floor. Then Nero hit him against the wall again and again without stopping. Finally, while he was still holding it, he joined his demonic power and destroyed the bear's head with his devil bringer. After finishing his beat down on the bear, Nero took out a test tube made of stone out of his pocket. He quickly drank the contents and felt his body recover. Once recovered, he put the bear's body next to the rabbit as he picked up rebellion and continued to drag the bodies. Few minutes later. In the cave where Nero had been for the last few days, you could hear the noises of a person chewing and swallowing desperately. The little light emanating from the stone showed the body of a white bear lying on the ground, as well as that of the white rabbits, and in the middle of those bodies was Nero eating the leg of one of the rabbit and one of the arms of the bear. Nero. He munching and swallowing the meat, imagine that in all this time the bodies of these two bastards remained as I left them. It's lucky, this way I have more easy food. Nero drank some of the water from the stone to pass the raw meat he was eating. After so many days, he didn't care what it was as long as he could eat. Nero was look at the bear's corpse man I really gave you a beat down, but hey that what you get when you fight the unknown. Although your meat and that of the rabbit tastes disgusting, this is better than nothing. It was at the moment that Nero voraciously devoured the bodies of both monsters that an abnormal phenomenon affected his body. Nero. Ah. Ah. An intense pain suddenly attacked him. He felt his body being destroyed by the immense pain. The word erosion would perfectly describe the horrible feeling Nero felt. The pain intensified with the passage of time. Nero. Gua. W what's going on? Gua. The immense pain was corroding his whole body. In his desperation, Nero began to hit the ground hard due to his pain and quickly put his trembling hand in his pocket to take out a test tube made of stone, bit the edge of the tube and drank its contents. The recovery water began to work and the pain calmed down, but after a short time the agony continued. Nero. Higuga. But why isn't it worked? Aw. Oh. His body began to convulse from the pain. His body was throbbing. You could even hear those sounds coming from his body. However, in the next moment, the healing properties of the recovery water and neuro regeneration began to regenerate his body. When his body healed, the pain returned and it would have to be regenerated again. Even the water that said to heal serious wounds could not mitigate the effects the regeneration ability was suffering. Nero began to scream in pain and began to agonize on the floor. The pain was so great that he began to hit his fist and head against the ground again and again. Even so, Nero endured that immense torture for several minutes, after all, Nero didn't plan to die. His body began to change. First his dye white hair turned even whiter, then his eyes turned red, then his muscles and bones strengthened more than before, and crimson lines appeared all over his body. This phenomenon was known as muscle overcompensation. A process through which the body passes when its muscles are trained. These are broken by their intensive use, and in order to compensate and adapt to the effort, more muscles and stronger are created when the body recovers. The same process happens with a skeleton. 
Nero's body had begun to go through this phenomenon. Even though Nero had read in the books of the library that eating the flesh of the monsters was suicide, he had done it because of the hunger he felt. This meat was very toxic to humans for a simple reason. All of them have magic stones all over their body, which allows them to have extraordinary physical abilities, thanks to their magical power. Now, while Nero was dying of pain, inside the body this magic had begun to strongly cover his muscles and bones. This magic was called special magic. This did not require any magic circle or enchantment to be used, in addition to the fact that it used to be unstable. This type of instability would be fatal for humans, since from the inside, the poison would corrode their body destroying all their cells. In the past, anyone who consumed demonic meat would end up shattered into pieces and dead. Right now it would not be uncommon for Nero to end up dying to eat that meat, but what prevented this from happening was Nero regeneration ability and the water known as ambrosia. These were things that kept Nero alive. Because of this, his body was destroyed and healed, over and over again. Due to the constant destruction and restoration, his body was strengthening at an incredible speed. Destroy, repair, destroy and repair again. His body changed as he convulsed. This was as if he was being reborn. The birth ceremony where he threw his weakness, a metamorphosis, in which Nero screamed as if he were a newborn. Unknown location. We currently see space filled with nothingness and endless darkness with nothing but just solid rock-like meteors floating around, and in one of those meteors stood a figure it was none other than a woman, but it was hard to tell how she looked like. But the woman had a smile like a crescent moon. She could hear the scream of the hero who she fought against. And she's been watching him ever since the day she was sealed by him, and when he was betrayed when he eyes again and obtained new power and power. She felt long ago when demons existed in this world, but now she was focusing on what's happening now her beloved hero is getting stronger. And she was excited she couldn't wait till she has the strength to break herself free and to see her beloved hero. My dear beloved, you are the only one who is able to fight Emmy Scarlet, office you two are fools, I will not disregard this H-E-R-O, as much as I want him for myself, he seems to gather new women to repair his H-E-A-R-T, I'll be part of it soon, and I will not throw it away like you two instead I'll keep it close to Emmy. please wait for me, my dear beloved. I'll be coming very S-O-O-N with that said the woman's aura began to increase to flood this world. When the convulsions stop, Nero collapsed. His hair was wider than the dye he used, and the crimson lines formed on his body. Now it was similar to the monsters that plagued this level. Nero was lying on the ground without moving for several seconds, until little by little he began to move his right hand. Then his eyes slowly opened and he began to get up. Once he was seated, he opened and closed his hand, again and again. Nero. He let out a sigh wow, I'm still an idiot. I don't know why I thought that because of my regeneration, I could eat the meat of these monsters without problems, but I was so hungry that I couldn't resist it. Nero began to check his body, but to his surprise, his body was better developed than before, it even seemed that he had grown a little more. However, the strangest thing of all was that he felt that his body was overflowing with power, in addition to the fact that he also felt that he had something strange inside. I had a strange feeling of cold and heat at the same time. His conscience concentrated and looked at the crimson lines on his arm. Nero. What the hell happened to my body? These crimson lines are like those of the monsters of this level, how strange will this be a side effect of eating monster meat? MMMM maybe maybe I should concentrate on my power, maybe it might tell me something, he couldn't believe what he was feeling. His body felt different than ever he felt stronger like it increased enormously, but it was not only he could feel like abilities were mixed in. Before, his powers wasn't good enough, but from his stupid actions, his power went above than expected. Now his his power must be around the level of a mid-high class devil. In his maximum he could expect a super devil class. It was a huge advance. In addition to the fact that before his ability of transmutation to its full potential but. Now it was better and stronger leaving more the possibilities of what Nero abilities the transmutation evolved to. Nero. How did I get stronger so fast? No, more importantly, what is this feeling magic manipulation? Could it be that I can manipulate the magic directly? No, that's impossible or isn't it? To clarify his doubts, Nero extended his hand and concentrated. The crimson lines emerged again in his body. Little by little the feeling he had had before returned, and he concentrated it in his right hand. Then Nero decided to transmute and surprisingly, the ground rose easily. Nero. So that's how I thought. This feeling is the movement of magic. Now I no longer need spells to perform magic. Apparently eating these monsters has given me that strange ability. I have more skills, I should try them, but I'm still hungry. Nero continued to eat the bodies of the rabbit and the bear, until he literally left them in the bones. Only the bear's fur is left. After that he rest a little, before getting up and leaving the cave. Once outside, Nero decided to concentrate and feel the new power and review it and verify what new skills he had. Nero. 
MMM iron stomach. Oh, I see, so because of this ability I didn't feel pain again when I ate the monster meat. I was already saying why my body didn't hurt again after eating. Well, now I won't have any problems eating that meat. The next skill is Gale Claw this skill must be that of the bear let's see, and now how is it used? Maybe yes. Nero focused the magic on his hand, and imagined that his hand had the same claws as the bear. The moment he did it, he could feel it. He moved his hand towards a wall, and saw how deep marks remained on them. Nero. Wow, now I have the same ability. This will be very useful to me, good next skill flash step he smile and think about ideas, this won't be very difficult to imagine. First he made an image of how the rabbit took his steps. The important point was speed, going so fast that you could only see a blurred figure. He began to run and just as the rabbit did, he left residual figures due to the enormous speed with which he moved. I say. Well, I can move quickly like Yumi does. Now the next skill air dance this skill must be from that rabbit, but that bastard never used it in our battle, so I don't know how I can use it. I'll have to improvise. Nero was thinking about how he could use that skill. Just knowing the name wasn't enough for him to discover that he was doing the skill, but he couldn't think of anything. Nero. If only that stupid rabbit had used it, I wouldn't be having so many problems what if it does what its name says. MMM but I don't think it will allow me to walk in the air what if it allows me to create something to walk in the air. Something like a platform. Immediately Nero began to imagine a transparent platform in the air and jumped on it to test it. He was suspended in the air as if he were levitating. Nero. I got it. Who would say that eating those bastards would give me these skills, ha 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 ha. Nero was laughing for the first time in a long time, but without realizing it, his laughter had attracted some monsters. They were the same types of wolves with which the rabbit, which was now in his stomach, had fought before. They were a group of four wolves. Nero. He saw them but instead of worrying, he smiled. Wow, it looks like some mutts want to play, he licks his lips, more food for me then. Nero was concentrated. Well he kept looking at the wolves approaching. At that moment two wolves threw themselves at him, but Nero only activated his ability Gale Claws, and with rebellion and quick cut, both wolves were split into several pieces. The other two wolves watched the show without knowing what had happened. Nero walked to where the pieces of the wolves were, picked up one and put it in his mouth. He chewed it and swallowed it as if it were the most normal for him. Nero. It still tastes as disgusting as the others, but hey, you can't do anything. Now let's see what new ability I have begins to concentrate and review his new skills. Nero. So lightning field, what a disappointment. Before I saw them throw lightning and I thought I could do that, but I can only cover myself with electricity. Well, it's better than nothing. In addition, it seems that since they're the weakest in the place, you do not raise my power at all, she then began to shrug his shoulders, at least they will serve me as food. The wolves were shaken when they felt Nero's gaze, this was because he was seeing them as simple food. His look was the same as the one the bear had given him. Nero directed his murderous instinct towards them while smiling in a sinister way. The wolves realized the danger and tried to flee. Unfortunately, Nero used flash step, and in a few seconds he stood in front of him. Nero. He smiles gently, but it was terrifying. Were you guys going somewhere? Nero transmuted the ground and made two thick and large arms appear that imprisoned them. The wolves tried to get rid of them, but it was impossible for them. Nero approached the men with a quick movement, he tore them apart. Nero. Well, today was a great day. I got new skills, I quickly am getting stronger, my power increased, and I got a lot of food. I also discovered that if I eat monsters, I can increase my strength, power and get new skills. Yep, it was a great day. Nero picked up the pieces of the wolves and went quietly to his cave. A few days later. It's been several days since the discovery of eating monster meat. Nero had continued to go down levels, one after the other. From the level of the tar, a total of 50 levels had descended. With his skills, weapons and his ambrosia he had advanced quickly. Although there was a time when his life was put at stake, thanks to the ambrosia he had managed to get out alive. One of these cases was when I was on a level that had the ground covered in poisonous fog. There was a 2 meters frog, rainbow colored, that spit out a poison that caused immense pain, very similar to the one he felt the first time he ate monster meat. And there was also a moth that spread scales that caused paralysis. Fortunately, for that type of case, he had installed in his molars small chewable containers that contained ambrosia. Thanks to that, he survived at that level, and there was a feast of moth and frog. It is worth mentioning that when Nero placed the chewable containers on their molars, he could notice that his teeth had begun to change, but he did not give it much importance and continued to move forward. Another of the times he had problems is when he reached a level that looked like a dense forest, how he was in an underground labyrinth, this left him perplexed. Nero thought it was the most unpleasant place so far, because its temperature was extremely hot, and it was densely humid. The demons of this level were a huge centipede and the living trees. 
The ones that caused him problems were the hundred feet. While exploring, one of them fell in front of him. Nero immediately took out his gun and shot at point-blank range, but he didn't expect that every time a section of the body was hit, it would separate. Fighting one of these centipedes was like fighting 30 monsters. The firearm was burning because it was being used very frequently, and it took him a while to recharge it. In the end I ended up using Rebellion, Air Claws and his Devil Bringer to finish them. That battle made him understand the weakness he had when using his firearm, so he set out to improve his reload time. As if that battle were not enough, after I killed the centipede, several of them appeared, and Nero faced a hard battle that took him several minutes. After killing the centipedes, he ran into another type of monsters. These were the tree monsters that were very similar to the treats of RPG games. Their underground roots would come out underground, and their vines acted like whips for them. However, the greatest feature of the treats were not these trivial attacks. When they were in a hurry, they threw the red fruits that covered their heads. There was no offensive capacity in them. After killing them, Nero was curious and decided to try them. At that moment, the world stopped around him he was left without moving for several minutes. This was not because the fruit had some paralysis effect, but because it was extremely delicious. It was sweet and fresh, the red fruit was comparable to a watermelon. Despite its shape and size, it wasn't like an apple. The displeasure Nero felt from that annoying level disappeared. His determination to continue descending to get even stronger and return to Sekvira arms. After weeks of just eating that horrible monster meat, that was the first sweet thing he tasted. When he reacted, Nero began to laugh loudly for a few seconds. Once he stopped his gaze was that of a beast looking for his prey. He dedicated himself to hunting all the treats that were at that level. When he was finally satisfied, he continued with his journey, although he left these monsters extinct. In this way he had advanced the 150 level. Right now Nero was inside the shelter that he had done at level 150. He was concentrated on checking his powers. Nero? It's not bad. From what I see, I'm no longer the same as before he said, while looking at his devil bringer, in more than one way. Nero's body had continued to change slowly, to the point where it was now visible. His nails had become claws, and his devil bringer had begun to change and get stronger. Nero? I guess this is because I don't have stable control of my power, or maybe my body is simply adapting to my situation, and is changing to help me survive, he let out a sigh, the truth is I have no idea. But it's not like it's important. Nero got up from the ground, put his guns in the holster of his red coat, Rebellion in the holster of his back. This time he had made a bag with the skin of another monster, and there he only put some grenades that he had made, as well as several containers of ambrosia. The reason Nero was getting ready was because he had discovered a strange structure at that level. It was a space around the area that was creepy. At the end of this peripheral area, there was a huge steel doors. Nero? Is this a way out? No there's some stairs over there he said as he let out a sigh and look at the huge steel doors were, well he was going slowly but surely, and when he arrived he began to analyze it, in addition to noticing the two statues with swords in their hands. That gave him a very bad feeling, well I have no idea what to do, and for worse those two are obvious that they will get up and attacked. Brother, look. After such a long time, we finally have company. Upon hearing that voice Nero fixed his gaze on the top of the statues where he saw two pairs of eyes, one pair was blue and the other red. I see this time the voice came from the statue on the right. What if we amuse our guest? You're right, we have to be good hosts. What do we do? Well the two creatures that were on the statues were talking, as Nero began to lose his patience since all he wanted was to pass, but with so much talk, he could not even hear his own thoughts. Let me think, we have to come up with a good strategy. Nero? Puff sighed the white-haired boy as he moved from side to side. Brother, our guest just sighed, said the blue-eyed creature. Sighing. And what is that? Asked the red-eyed creature. It's something that humans do when. Nero. I'm already tired. Exclaimed Nero. Are y'all never going to shut up? In case you haven't noticed, what your guest wants is to come in, so can't you get out of way? Well, our mission is to defend this door, said the red-eyed creature. Indeed, so we can't let you pass, ended the blue-eyed creature. Both creatures jumped to where Nero was. When looking at them, the boy noticed something quite curious, despite having a rather kunky body, the enemies in front of him were missing their respective head, but it seemed their true heads seemed to be on the tip of the handle of the swords they held. Nero. This day couldn't be weirder, sighed Nero as he took out rebellion. Being taken by surprise, Nero had to evade two descending cuts from the brothers, observing with a grimace how a shock wave was provoked when each attack hit the ground. Moving on to the attack, the white-haired boy attacked the red brother with a frontal thrust, being surprised to see how the one mentioned with an iron block endures his thrust. Moving aside, Nero narrowly dodged a horizontal cut by the blue brother. Nero. 
At this rate we will never finish said Nero activating his devil bringer, while his eyes turned red. Throwing a right hook, Nero managed to break the blockage of the red brother, taking advantage of those seconds to make multiple lunges that sank into the torso of the aforementioned. Using his spectral hand as a shield, the white-haired boy stopped the attack of the blue brother, growing once again his spectral hand completely enveloped the body of his enemy, raising him and throwing him against his red brother, watching funny as they both crashed into one of the walls. Both brothers tried to stand up, staggering for a moment and losing their balance for a few second seconds that Nero took advantage of activating his air dance, the white-haired boy moving at a speed impossible to follow for his enemies, found the weak points in the defense of the aforementioned, attacking with force at the aforementioned points. Ascending, descending, horizontal and even lunges cuts were the types of attacks that the brothers were receiving. After a few seconds, Nero finished his attack, going back a few meters he observed the result of his attacks. The bodies of his enemies were in a lousy state, full of deep cuts that had apparently torn off pieces of meat of considerable size, since he could see some bones. Suddenly he saw how the body of the red brother fell heavily to the ground, releasing his sword. The remaining brother and to Nero's surprise, took the sword of his deceased brother, joining both swords by the tips of his handles, forming a double-bladed sword with a steel edge, rising with vigor, the remaining brother threw himself at Nero, attacking with quick cuts that produced wind and fire. That new ability in the swords of his enemy caught Nero's attention, since he could cover his swords with energy, but not give him some elemental affinity, but that was not an excuse to let himself be defeated. Nero? Let's try this, said Nero, taking out his Miramasa, managing to block and counterattack more easily compared to when he only had rebellion wielded. Blocking a diagonal cut, Nero made two diagonal cuts in response to his enemy's attack. Observing how this retreated in pain. Nero? It's time to try something, said Nero as he relaxed his breathing and mentalized his goal from one moment to the next, the white-haired boy disappeared using his air dance. The next thing that could be seen was how the body of the remaining brother began to shake violently, after a few seconds it could be seen that it was what caused that. It was Nero who using his starburst stream, quickly hit the body of his enemy, but there was something different the aforementioned technique was running at a much higher speed than it should have in, when he tried it with Shino. After about 30 seconds of continuing and continuing to cut the body of his enemy, the white-haired boy stopped, watching as the remaining brother fell to the ground, and the sword separated, falling to the ground, digging into the act. Nero was about to go on his way but then. Don't go. Take us. We've been waiting for a long time. Surprised, Nero turned and saw how the red sword was talking. Yes, an eternity. The blue sword spoke this time. Waiting for someone more powerful than us. The someone who could control us. My name is Anai. The red sword appeared. And I, Redra. The blue sword continued. Anai Redra. Take us with you, we will be of great help to you, said both swords at the same time. Upon hearing that, Nero thought about it for a few seconds. Nero? Okay but on one condition. Redra? Which is it? We'll do whatever it takes. Nero? Shut up. Anai Redra. As you wish, both swords answered. Nero took both swords and began to make several cuts in the air, watching funny as the blades of the swords were covered with fire and wind respectively, joining both swords, forming a single one, spinning on itself, produced a small whirlwind of fire. Separating both swords, throwing cuts of wind and fire with enough force. An eye. Impressive congratulated the sword, but. Upon hearing the voice of the sword, Nero slammed the heads of the swords against each other, producing a small metallic noise. Nero? No talking said Nero looking at the swords without receiving any answer, better. While Nero was holding Miramasa to slice the body of one of the brothers where he took a magic stone that was the only thing he found, and when he approached it to one of the grooves at the huge steel doors, this glow Nero understood what the mechanism was, so he approached the second brother to extract the other magic stone that he placed in the other groove, and when this glow he heard the mechanism opened. Once this mechanism finished opening, Nero pushed completely only in case there was an enemy. I would need to take it out, but instead at the end of the room there was a large cube. Nero? Is the prize a simple cube? He said very confused, but before he decided to close the door he looked at the cube where now he seemed to see a kind of the lump form that strangely spoke to catch his attention. Who there said weakly, being that Nero was surprised to see that that lump was actually a person. And when he looked at it well, he noticed that it was a girl between 12 and 13 years old in age, with eyes red as blood, and her figure looked worn out completely emaciated, however he noticed that if you didn't look at that she had a nice face, are you a human? Said weakly seeing Nero looking at her so she looked back at him. Nero? 
I'm sorry to bother you I'm leaving now he said taking the door of the place to closing it calmly as the girl when she saw this action went into a huge panic and tried to scream, but her voice had not been used in years so much so it was difficult for her to speak, so some incomprehensible murmurs were heard attracting Nero's attention. Girl. W-A-I-T. Please save me she asked with great difficulty. Nero. I won't do it he said coldly and not caring about the life of the person at the end of the room. Girl. Why? Please I will do anything, she said very desperately and that was noticed by Nero, who were attentive. Nero. That's obvious you are suspicious we are at the bottom of the abyss, if someone is sealed in this hell, it must be someone extremely dangerous. In addition to that confinement in which you are is the only thing that holds you back for sure if I release you, it would be a nuisance, or you would end up being a stone in my way he said, leave the girl in shock at such a response, being almost on the verge of crying when thinking about not being saved. Girl. No. I'm not bad. Wait I was betrayed. She screamed waiting for him to help her, and those words and despair came to the mind of Nero, who only thought was she was betrayed. Logic dictated that she was dangerous or something like that, but when Nero heard that word, he felt like couldn't move around, he couldn't leave her there. Nero? Ah just for this time I will ignore the logic he let out a tired sigh to walk in the direction where the girl who looked at him very surprised, and when she saw that he arrived where he just sat on the floor to look at her, listen to me carefully for this occasion I'm ignoring my new self, and I'm acting like my old self, so if you want me to get you out of that thing you have to explain. To me why you're locked up here, do you understand? You only have a few minutes to talk he said since he wanted to continue his trip. The girl had heard it, but she couldn't talk yet full of surprise, she analyzed his words stopping when he said his new self and his old self, which made her very curious. Nero. Hey. You're listening to me. He screamed a little angry at not hearing the girl explaining anything to him, if you won't say anything better I'll go he said, already getting up from the place in the direction of the door, and she noticed that he wouldn't hesitate for a moment, implying that he would go through that door, so she hurried to talk. Girl. I am an ancestral vampire she said, and Nero looked at her hoping to hear more, I was granted a great power, with which I worked very hard for my country, but. One day all my servants told me that they didn't need me anymore she said, and Nero remembered that it was something similar to him with the alliance, something that made him frown, my uncle became the king, I had no problem with that however, he considered that I was dangerous by my powers, and since they could not kill me, they sealed me here. She said quite tired noticing how Nero was in front of her, while that he was looking analytically until he relaxed his gaze. Nero. So you're a vampire princess, aren't you? He said and the girl lonely nodded because of the overexertion that was talking after so long, what do you mean? They couldn't kill you. Girl. Automatical regeneration, my wounds heal immediately even if I am decapitated I will not die. Nero. Wow that's incredible, is that your great power? He said quite surprised since he has a regeneration, but not at that level yet. Girl. No I also have direct manipulation of magic, so I don't need to do magical formations she said explaining the skill. Nero, mind. She was born with the ability that is interesting is different from me since I got by eating monsters. Girl. I beg you help me. Get me out of here she said very desperately almost in tears, and Nero looked at her with a calm face. Nero mind. She didn't do anything wrong, first they used her, and then they discarded her it's similar to me only that she was locked up what should I do. Memory. Help anyone who needs help be a good kid, he remembered as those words, and he looked at the girl. Nero. Transmute. He said, starting to transmuting the cube that has great resistance. So he increasing the amount of power when transmuting causing the cube to begin to erode before such an amount of power that it was receiving, and seeing that only one push was missing, so Nero increased only a little more to achieve his goal, being that it is cube practically melted completely, and the girl being. Incredulous to be free. On the other hand, Nero breathed heavily when he released so much power from a single sitting, so he only sat on the floor while recovering the air in the transmutation he had used more than half of its magical power. Nero. That was something new I hope there is no one more sealed in this place I use more than the half of my power well that doesn't matter anymore, he said taking out a bottle with the ambrosia to recover a little faster, but before he could start taking it his hand was held by the girl's small hands, even his gaze met hers when I heard her speak again. Girl. Thank you she said weakly as she looked at him, and he didn't know what to say until a memory crossed his mind about the vampires, but it reminded him of Elminald, so he just ignored that memory, and took the bottle with ambrosia with his mouth, and began to drink it, leaving the girl who was holding his hand, and when he finished drinking it, he felt much better although that wouldn't recover. All his magical power but made him felt better. In that moment of thought he looked at the girl being that he thought and wondered what did she eat all this time. Or hadn't that she hasn't eaten or drink anything here. Being that surprised he thought that she had not tasted a bite or even drank something, and when he was about to ask her. She was the one who spoke first. 
Girl. What's your name? She said as he kept grabbing Nero's hand. Nero. My name. Oh it's true I haven't told you my name is Nero, just Nero what's your name? He said a little interested. Girl. Nero, 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 she murmured many times wanting to engrave the name of her savior very deep in her soul, and when she felt satisfied she spoke, give me a name. Nero. Do you want me to give you a name? Don't tell me that you forget your name. He said, thinking it would be logical forget something like that after so long, but then he saw how she only denied that. Girl. I don't need my old name anymore, I want you to give me a name, she said with longing eyes, and Nero started to think of something being very difficult to name a person. Nero. You know you're asking me for something very difficult ah he sighed as he thought, and a certain image came to his mind, so what do you think, you? He said looking at the girl. Girl. You. You, you she repeated several times considering that that was her new name. Nero. Where I come from you means moon, it occurred to me since it was the first impression I had when I saw your deep red eyes as your hair shone imagining a bright moon that floated in the immense night he said, surprising the girl who was excited at the explanation, and her eyes showed great happiness. You. So from now on I'm you thank you very much Nero said, and he just nodded noticing how she was completely naked, so he decided to take off his coat with the skin of the bear that he killed. Nero. Take it you need it. It's not good to walk around naked he said, and she looked at him, and then realized that she was completely naked embarrassing herself, being that her face turned red in an instant, so she accept the boy's gesture, but then I look at him, and he doesn't understood what was going on. You. Nero, pervert, she said while covered her body. Nero. TSK I didn't take your clothes off, he said very annoyed by the girl's late reaction, although it was because she called him a pervert that brought back memories, but he only let it pass. You quickly put on Nero's bear coat, but since she is only 140 centimeters tall, the coat was very big. Nero took advantage of the fact that you put on his coat and drank more of his ambrosia to completely recover his lost power, but the moment he fully recovered perception told him that there was an extremely dangerous enemy right on top of them. The next moment the roof collapsed, Nero quickly took you and used flash step to retreat at the same time that Nero looked at the place where they had been and could see what had attacked them. The monster is 5 meters in length on average. He had four huge and long arms and eight legs around him. A sharp sting was present in his two tails. Scorpions would be the best comparison. As for the two tails, it would be wise to assume that they are poisonous. Nero mind. TCH unlike all the monsters I faced before, I can feel that this scorpion is in another category, this monster is very strong. He was sure that at the time of entering and using perception, there was no other monster besides an eye and Rudra. Nero mind. This can only mean that this scorpion woke up when I released you seal. He is the last resort to prevent her from escaping if I abandon her, I will be able to escape without any problem, that would be the most logical thing. Nero was hesitating, his gaze met Yu's. She was fervently looking at Nero and not caring about the scorpion. Her eyes were like a surface of calm waters, the resolution of herself. The eyes that conveyed his feelings. Yu had entrusted herself to Nero. Seeing those eyes and understanding her feelings, he lifted the corners of his lips and revealed a smile full of confidence. He had already decided not to worry about anyone else that aren't close to him, but now he was willing to protect you. The dull light that remained in his broken heart had that spark again willing to protect those. Because of this betrayed girl, Nero made a promise to protect her. If he couldn't respond to Yu's pleas, then he couldn't be considered a man. Nero. Today I'm ignoring logic a lot well, it doesn't matter, look at the scorpion with a grin, come at me with everything you have, for getting in my way, I'll kill you and devour you. The moment Nero made that statement, he quickly took the little ambrosia out of his bag and gave it to you to drink. She was with her watery eyes when she was forcibly fed with a strange substance, but she was surprised when her vitality was being restored. Nero. You, I need you to get on my back and hold on tight, as he had hugged you with his right arm, he lowered her, so that she could climb on his back and hold on tightly. He knew he couldn't fight 100% if he had to protect her, but he had no option. Hold on with all your strength, you despite continuing, she clung to Nero with all the strength she had. The scorpion was not patient, so he shot a purple liquid from his sting. Nero evaded it by jumping quickly to the side, but kept his gaze in the place where the purple liquid fell, and could see how it melted. He put himself in a safe place and began to analyze the scorpion. Nero mind. It has two tails. One shoots acid and the other I still don't know what it does. While Nero was in his thought, he took out his guns and began to shoot at the scorpion. A bullet traveling at 3.9 kilometers per second hit the scorpion's head and exploded. Yu, who was on his back, was surprised. With a weapon that she had never seen before, he fired a flash of light. There were no signs of magic. 
Rather, it seemed as if a thunder was running through his right hand without the use of a magical formation or an enchantment. In simple words, Nero was like you, capable of manipulating magic directly. They were the same, and both were in the abyss. She ignored the scorpion and concentrated only on Nero. On the other hand, Nero was using air dance to move in the air and avoid acid easily, but he had a gloomy expression for the first time since he ate the bear. Using perception and magic perception he knew that the scorpion didn't move, he knew that the scorpion was about to do something, but he didn't know that. At that moment the scorpion's tail was growing, and its huge sting, which was pointing at it, shot at an enormous speed. Seeing this Nero was about to dodge it, but when he was going to do it, the sting exploded in the air and turned into pellets. Nero. Shit he quickly began to shoot the pellets and used steel legs to destroy with kicks those that his firearm could not. Then he saved his firearm and instantly took out one of his grenades and threw them at the scorpion. This one exploded and covered the scorpion with burning tar. This grenade was one of the new inventions he had made with the tar that he picked up from the level of the shark. Once this tar began to burn, it would burn at 3000 degrees centigrade. The scorpion had been wounded by the grenade, but at the same time he was looking angrily at Nero. Scorpion. Kishaya. The scorpion threw itself towards Nero. As it stretched its forearms as if they were cannon shots. He dodged one making a jump, another using flash step, another giving a boosted kick with steel legs, and the last one evaded with a jump. Having dodged all his arms, Nero turned his head to see if Yu was still clinging to him. She had used all her strength not to let go and keep clinging. Seeing that she was still well, he used flash step to quickly reach the scorpion's back and took out his firearms, and then started shooting without stopping. However, this only caused scratches. Understanding that his firearm did not have enough power, active gale claw, his claws were distorted and he began to attack, but like his firearms, he only caused scratches on that resistant shell. The scorpion got tired of receiving Nero's harmless attacks and raised his tail to shoot them pellets. He jumped and dodged, staying in the air with his ability air dance, threw another incendiary grenade at the scorpion's back. That would keep him busy for a while. An ERO mind. That thing has two tails, one that throws pellets and the other acid, in addition to having a hard shell. My weapon doesn't have enough power to hurt it, Gale Claw can damage it, but if I want to do it, I must use more magic, and I'm not sure if this scorpion has another hidden trick. Well, I think I'll be safe. Nero. You, hold on tight. You. M.M. Using his air dance and flash step skills, Nero threw himself towards the scorpion's face. He quickly covered himself with his forearms without knowing that he was counting on him to do that. As he quickly approached the scorpion, Nero began to fill his lungs with air. And then a thin stream of fire was released as yes Nero was using fire dragon. Roar the fire enlarging it itself and strike the face of the scorpion, who was protecting himself with his arms. Yu was surprised to see Nero spitting fire, the only creatures she knew that could do that were the dragons. On the other hand. Nero, who had just stopped spitting fire, saw how the shell of the scorpion's arms had melted, and he began to scream in pain. Nero. He had a smile of pride, this is the fire learned to kill a dragon. I haven't tested yet, but I believe I can kill a dragon with it. And now gathers power in his right hand devil bringer. The light emerge from the devil bringer appearing a second arm as he starts punching brutally, giving it some good combos. As the shell of the scorpion's arms were breaking, it couldn't stand the power of the devil bringer, and it was destroyed leaving the scorpion with only two arms of the four it originally had. The scorpion was totally furious, so it got up and pointed his tail at where his enemy was. On the other hand, Nero realized what the scorpion planned to do, and after looking carefully he saw that it was the tail with which he threw acid. Nero. It will be better to take care of those annoying tails, he fired another shoot from Donner. The scorpion quickly moved his tail to dodge it, but Nero's shoots also changed his direction, managing to impact and destroy the tail of the scorpion, making it lose his balance. Nero took Rebellion out of his back, very careful not to hurt you, and began to cover it with his demonic power, giving him much more power. He used Flash Step to head back towards the scorpion, taking advantage of the fact that he was still unbalanced, and cut off another of his arms. Nero began to use Flash Step and Air Dance to move quickly while cutting the scorpion's legs, as well as in several other parts. Now the large shell that the scorpion had could no longer withstand the attacks of rebellion wrapped in demonic power. Nero also kicked the scorpion while using steel legs to unbalance him every time the scorpion wanted to use his tail to throw pellets. He also spits fire to weaken some parts of the shell. Yu was very surprised to see Nero's true strength. In a short time Nero had cornered the scorpion, it was only a matter of time before the scorpion was defeated, but, he made a serious mistake he trusted himself, and just as when an animal is cornered, it is capable of all the scorpion was no exception. Suddenly a powerful cry came from the scorpion. Scorpion. Key. 
Nero felt chills run through his body and immediately tried to withdraw with flash step, but it was already too late. The surrounding terrain began to vibrate and countless fragments were expelled from the earth. Nero? Damn it. This was a complete surprise. Nero was going to escape desperately in the air, but he twisted his body to protect you from an approaching fragment. This action caused his balance to be broken. He was able to dodge using rebellion and steel legs. When he was dodging, on the edge of his vision he saw the scorpion shoot his pellets quickly. Nero's face became stiff. If he wanted to protect you, there was only one way clenching his teeth tightly. He used his devil bringer to summon a larger spectral arm that surprised you and swung it around to deflect all the pellets, but not all of them. Nero avoided fatal injuries. Since you was on his back, he decided to receive the little needles there were on his body. Nero was thrown back for the impact causing rebellion to fall. Then he rolled on the floor while the intense pain that destroyed his body. You was thrown away from his back by the crash. Despite the enormous pain Nero felt from the wounds he had as it started to regenerate and recover him, so he quickly shot a bullet with Donner towards the tail of the scorpion, destroying it, and without wasting time he threw a light grenade, which blinded the scorpion. He knew that wouldn't entertain it for a long time, so he took out his ambrosia and drank it to recover immediately. Once he was cured, he started looking for you, but she found him first and went to him. You. Nero. She ran to Nero anxiously. Her inexpressiveness was gone, she was about to burst into tears. Nero. I'm fine. Don't worry just trust me, now where the hell did Rebellion fall? Despite Yu's concerns, Nero continued to concentrate on looking for Rebellion to continue fighting the scorpion. Looking at Nero, she began to cry. You? Why? Nero? What? You? Why don't you just run away? Nero? What the hell are you saying? I'm not going to run away just because there's a stronger monster. Just trust me and I have just suffered the consequences of that. I also told you that I would get you out of here, so I'm not going to abandon you. To survive, Nero was willing to do anything. He would cheat, lie, make surprise attacks, commit foul play, whatever he needs. If he wanted to survive, he couldn't think of fighting just, that would only lead him to death. After all, in the time he had spent in the abyss, his way of seeing the world had changed. Nero's heart was shattered and corrupted because of the factions, and because of them he was thinking of abandoned his humanity little by little. His current mentality, his lifestyle and even his body, had ceased to be those of a human. Nero himself knew that there was no turning back to this, or at least that's what he thought. When he met that girl, what he should have done was abandon her, but he didn't. Something inside him didn't allow him to. It was at that moment that he realized that he had not yet totally lost his humanity, there was still some of it inside him and was recovering. She and all the friends and allies. Nero has managed to awaken that little light in Nero's dark heart. Thanks to her and everyone. Nero remembered his humanity. For that reason, he didn't want to abandon her. Nero. Gets up and starts to clean himself well, it's time to start the second round he said as he look at you, I'll create a shelter for you. He placed his hand on the ground and transmuted some walls around you. With that done, he turned his gaze to the scorpion. This one had already recovered and had found it. You? Wait. I can. Nero. He take out some containers drink them, you will recover with that. I'll take care of that thing and protect you he said show a warm smile like the past. For a second she wanted to say something, but Nero stroked her head gently and being careful not to hurt her with his claws. She blushed when she felt Nero's caress and couldn't say anything. Nero advanced to where the scorpion was. The scorpion stared at him angrily. Scorpion. Kisha. The scorpion's cry echoed. Waves began to form on the ground around him, but Nero didn't stand still, he made a huge jump and stayed in the air using air dance. He quickly glanced at the place where he had made the shelter for you, and could see that it was still intact. To make it resistant enough, he put several layers on it, and made sure it is very thick. Nero. Let's get this over with. Using flash step he threw himself at the scorpion and threw another grenade at him. The scorpion eluded him, he already knew Nero's attack style or so he thought. What had been thrown at the scorpion was just a rock, by the time he realized the deception, it was already very late. Nero had thrown another incendiary grenade on the scorpion's back, making it burn, but that was not all. He put together his demonic power and shoot the scorpion with several shoot from Donner and Schlag. Nero landed on the ground breathing a little agitated. When the tar finished burning, the scorpion was seen. The scorpion was very hurt, but I still wasn't completely defeated. At the moment that Nero was about to attack again, but he saw you leave the shelter he had made. She raised her hand and pointed at the scorpion, while saying something he couldn't hear. At that moment, Nero felt a shiver run through his body and jumped with all his strength to get away from the scorpion. A second later, a pillar of bluish-white flames of 6 to 7 meters in diameter formed over the scorpion. 
A scorpion began to flee from the pillar of flames so as not to be injured, but you would not allow it. She moved her finger and directed the pillar of flames towards the scorpion. Scorpion. Gujiaya. A scream full of agony. The pillar exploded in a flash of light and everything was blinded by her. Nero only observed the sublime magic in total astonishment while protecting his eyes with his arms. Soon, the flames disappeared and the magic ended. There, in the center was the figure of the scorpion in an anguished pose, with its outer layer melted by the flames. The outer shell, which did not even melt with the incendiary grenade of 3000 degrees Celsius and had only done so when it launched its fire, the same one that did not crack when it was fired by a rail cannon, it was melted very easily by Yu's magic. Nero looked very surprised at the state of the scorpion, but in that he remembered that Yu had been very weak and had been recovering with the ambrosia. So it was most likely that that magic had left her very exhausted again. He looked at where she was, and as he had thought, she was about to fall. Using flash step Nero got to where she was and held her before she fell. She seemed to have exhausted her reserve of magic, but she still seemed very cheerful when she was embraced by Nero. Nero? You, are you okay? You? She had a smile seeing Nero yup. Just a little tired. Nero stared at you and she looked at him in the same way. At that moment the sound of the scorpion trying to get up interrupted them. Nero left you seated and raised his devil bringer to manifest a larger spectral arm and punch it completely killing the scorpion. Once he was sure that the scorpion was already dead, he sat next to you. Nero. You surprised me with that attack, you, what's his name? You. Azure Sky. Nero. I see, it's a very powerful magical attack. You know, the next time you use an equally powerful magic attack, let me know in advance. You. I knew that Nero would dodge it. Nero. What did you rely on to believe that? You. I just felt that you would do it I felt that you would understand what I was going to do without me telling you. Nero. Let out a sigh well, it's true that I could understand what you would do just by looking at you, but I keep insisting that you let me know next time. I don't want to end up like that scorpion. You. Mm. I will do it. Nero. Well, it's time to go. Can you stand up? You. Know the strength that I recover I use for that attack. Nero. Despite having drunk all the ambrosia I gave you, haven't you fully recovered yet? How strange. You. There's a way to recover faster she said staring at him. Nero. What is it? Very curious. You. Drinking blood. Nero. It's true. You're a vampire, so it makes sense for you to recover faster that way. Well, then, what are you waiting for? You looked at him in amazement, it was the first time that someone offered their blood. She crawled towards him and sat on his lap, and then timidly bit his neck. Nero felt how his power was being drained from him little by little. He just hugged her and waited for her to finish. For a moment, you trembled, but soon buried his face deeper in his neck and burned it strongly. Maybe it was his imagination, but he thought she was happy. Maybe because it was the first time she tasted blood in many years. After several minutes, she finally separated from him. In doing so, she licked her lips with a delirious expression. Nero was fascinated, even though she had a childish figure. Yu's skin, which was previously emaciated, disappeared completely, and now her skin shined like white porcelain. The color returned to her cheeks, and it seemed to be a dreamy red pink. The crimson eyes emitted a warm light. His small thin hands caressed Nero's cheeks. You. Delicious. For a second, Nero had a slight shiver when he heard her say that, but he recovered quickly and stood up. Nero. I guess you're better now, aren't you? You. Mm. Nero. Well, then, let's pick up what's important and get out of here. Nero approached the scorpion and cut his flesh, then picked up everything he could from the shell. You didn't know why he did that, but she still helped him. Now that he had drunk Nero's blood, she had superhuman strength. After finishing taking all the flesh of the scorpion, he picked up Rebellion and went for the flesh of the Anai and Rudra, the mansion said cannibalism making him bang their head again, and the surprise that two sword can talk. Once Nero had everything, he returned with Yu to his base. She walked next to him and from time to time her eyes met, but he quickly ignored it and continued walking. Nero didn't know when his journey through this labyrinth would end, but it seemed that he acquired a new and reliable companion. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.